All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, normally, do this talk in a little bit longer time, so we're going to, let's see, I'll, I'm going to go pretty fast, and if there's time at the end, we might even do a little bit of a demo or something. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, first, a little bit about me. So, I am didn't wasn't born there, but I grew up in Arizona, and for those of you who don't know where that is, that's the one, the state with the Grand Canyon in it. So... <laughs> Um, I then moved down south in Arizona. I grew up in Phoenix, but I went down to Tucson and went to University of Arizona down there, and I studied computer engineering. When I finished that, um, I moved to Austin, Texas, and I worked on the design team for the first 64-bit processor from AMD, and the, that little bit up in the top corner. That was the part that I worked on. <laughs> After uh, I worked there for a couple years, I left and went on a round the trip around the world uh, backpacking tour, and I was on the road for three and a half years, and uh, went to a bunch of places, so I'd love to talk about travel too, so. Uh, I first got involved with WordPress in 2011, a little bit after my uh, daughter was born. I did started doing some plug-in development, um, and some server-side stuff uh, to back it as well, and uh, <clears throat> for a client, and that went pretty well, and then a, a few, several years later though, they were, you know, their business was successful, but they were having problems with their WordPress sites with hosting and on the performance and security side. So that's when I started up uh, what became Site District. And so, you know, we're a WordPress managed WordPress hosting platform, and we're now hosting you know hundreds and hundreds of uh, clients and thousands of sites. So that's about a bit about me. And here's an outline of what I'm going to talk about today. So first, of course, why are we here? <laughs> why does performance matter? Caching, a little word about that. How do we measure performance? What does that mean? Uh, then, uh, how does WordPress hosting uh, impact your performance? Uh, we'll talk about <clears throat> diagnosing the server response time, and then a little bit about the page load speed, and then, like I said, because I'm crazy, and if there's time, we'll try and do a demo at the end. So first, a little word about performance optimization. It, performance optimization is definitely an art and takes some time and it's more about the concepts and kind of understanding what's going on. There, you, there are some, in some areas that you can get some really quick big wins, other things take longer to dive into. So today I'm going to try and focus on some of the things that are the easiest and the highest value. Um, but uh, there's, there's also harder situations too. So why does performance matter? So, um, so if you have someone visiting your site, uh, if you're running a business site, it matters because of conversions and people, you don't want your potential customers to leave your site when they come to it if it's too slow. You're working on building your site, it wastes your time if the back end is, is uh, too slow for loading pages. A slow site gives a bad perception to people that visit it if they have to wait for that page to load. Your page speed affects your Google ranking. So Google's um, published before that you know they give attention to how fast your site is loading, and that's a factor. And client satisfaction, repeat business. If you're building sites for clients, you build them a nice, fast website. They're more likely to come, you know, either to refer you to someone else or come back to have you um, build another site for them. And these are all great reasons, but. Even more than this, I want to make the rather bold claim that speed equals happiness. We, we're impatient people. We like instant gratification. So the faster, the better. All right, quick survey. Uh, by a raise of hands, how many of you have worked on or developed on a site that was slow or became slow? Okay, everyone look around, see how many people are raising their hands here as we go through. Have spent time trying to speed up a slow site. Have given up trying to speed up a slow site. <laughs> Have switched hosting providers because your site was slow. Have switched off plugins one at a time to try and speed up a site. And how many have a slow site now? Right, that number's at least smaller than <laughs> the first few. All right, so hopefully this talk will be a, a very uh, appropriate one for everyone. 
So I have a hypothesis about WordPress performance and that why don't developers, designers, site owners fix their, it's, well, slow is comfortable and optimization is risky and uncertain. And oftentimes you just don't know what to do to speed something up. Um, and you don't know if it could be faster and how much faster it will be. And so it's not that you don't want sites to be faster, it's just, it's not a priority. And so I wanna talk a little bit more about priority. And I'll define priority as value divided by effort. At the beginning we already talked about why it's valuable to have a fast site. But what about the effort? Well, if the effort goes down, your priority goes up. So my goal today is to show you how to minimize that effort. All right, caching. So caching, is it the solution to slow performance? Well, it's great, but it, you know, and you should definitely use it to get the best performance on your site. And uh, if you use an object caching plugin, that can often help across all, many pages on your site. And uh, page caching is the ultimate in speed. If you save the entire page content that is generated by WordPress, but it has some drawbacks. And so page caching isn't gonna help your WP admin get faster. It won't help you oftentimes on your front end pages if you're logged into WordPress. And large sites with uh, a lot of pages, the cache is, might not grab everything. And if you make changes, or site content's customized to the, the, uh, for the user, then it also won't help you. And then the cache can expire, get flushed, cleared, and then that very next request, if you have a slow site, and it's gonna be, could be quite slow, you could be waiting a couple seconds on a really slow site. So, in summary, you want that site to be fast without the cache. So let's talk a little bit about what fast means and how to measure it. All right, so I've got this diagram here, and this is kind of a simplified waterfall view of what happens when your browser requests a page and loads it into the browser to display it. So first of all, it's gonna take a look at that domain in your address bar and then do a DNS lookup on it to figure out, you know, where's that located? And then it's gonna connect to the server, and if your site's running HTTPS, which all your sites should these days, then it's gonna negotiate that connection, and then it's gonna send a requ the request to the server, and then we're gonna wait some amount of time, some, if your site is slow, a long time, for, uh, to get back the HTML that the browser is then gonna look at. Once the br browser gets the HTML, then it can start reading through that, and it'll parse it, and then it'll start loading other things like your images, your JavaScript files, your CSS fonts, stuff like that, and kind of in parallel it'll also start start doing the painting drawing of that, of your web page so that it shows up for people, shows up for you inside the browser. This first part is often called a time to first byte. Uh, it's also this part, just the server response is also often called that too. And that right there, that is WordPress um, running itself. And so we'll talk more about this later. Um, and how to optimize that. But first, let's understand you know, what's, how fast that should be. So, obviously, faster the better. And we're interested in this time to first byte with the page caching turned off for the reasons I listed earlier. I consider very fast to be 50 to 100 milli 150 milliseconds for, for that time to first byte. Fast, 150, 300, good. Starting to get slower there. Slow, very slow, and then some of the worst sites I've seen take 15 to 30 seconds or more to return that HTML to the browser. So you're sitting there staring at a blank, blank screen for 15 to 30 seconds or more, or your visitor is. I consider this area, if you're under 500 milliseconds, that's a pretty good target for WordPress. Um, Faster, of course, better, but for WordPress, which can often be a, a bit slow, uncached, that, that's a good ballpark to be in. All right, how do we measure that? How do we determine what the first time to first byte is on your website? So there's a bunch of ways. One of my favorite ways to uh, figure this out easily on any site that I visit is to use this Chrome extension. So this is called page performance. And if it's installed inside Chrome, then any page that you visit will have this little icon up here at the top, and if I click on it, then it shows me a bunch of stats and the time to first byte is shown in there. And I, it doesn't have to reload anything, it measures that uh, from any page that's loaded in my browser. 
You can also measure this from inside Chrome. So if you're using Google Chrome, you can just open up the developer tools. So you cl click on the three dots down here, more tools, developer tools. And that'll pop, in, pop open this uh, window here down on the bottom or on the side. And you will need to reload your page, in this case, in your browser to get the time to first byte. Once you reload, so click on the network page tab once you've got this open, reload, and then you can kind of hover over the, the number here. It'll tell you uh, what's going on. So for the first request, which I use the WordCamp page to, for this example, we can see that the time to first byte for this particular page load was about 70 milliseconds. So that's good. Uh, one of my favorite tools is webpagetest.org, and it's a free tool with a, a lot of good information. And uh, the first time you come there, you're going to want to select, figure out, uh, you'll want to select a test location that makes sense to you. So wherever most of your visitors are coming from, pick something like that. Uh, then I always expand these advanced options at the bottom and change the number of test runs from three down to one, but then click this Re repeat view and what that's going to let us what that's going to do is make sure the tool runs twice once as as a brand new visitor to your website is going to experience it and a second time as though they were browsing through the website or they came back later when their browser cache has kicked in and uh, that repeat views is oft often or should be faster but it's going to let us see kind of what's going on there with both of those and then I think usually want to make sure capture video is checked too and that's going to show us something called the film strip view which is very helpful. So if you go to webpagetest.org, you put in your, your URL, click test, and wait a little bit. You might get queued up and just have to go get coffee and come back. You'll then see some results come back that look like this. And so right up front and center, you can see they actually give you grades um, based on the time to first byte and other things. You can see the time to first byte, and I've highlighted it here in the, in the results. And so for this site, we're getting an A. Anything under 500 milliseconds actually gets an A, maybe under 600 even. Uh, and then, you know, the time to first byte is also listed here in the table for both the, the tests that are ran. If you want to dig in a little bit more, web page test also will let you click in and see, you know, what's going on. And you've got that time to first byte here shown. This is uh, a full waterfall view. It's similar to that diagram that I showed earlier, except this is for your actual site being tested, and it's got a lot more details in it as well. And then we've got what's called a film strip view, and this is a really cool tool, and I think probably underutilized. And this is showing what it looks like in the browser when someone's actually loading it. And so we can see in this diagram that your, whoever has come to this web page for the first view is staring at a blank screen for the first 1.1 seconds. And then we say at 1.2 seconds, something so you've got some image starting to show up, and it's going along. And then finally here, right at about two seconds, it's pretty much almost visually complete. Finally, 2.1, this is kicking in, in and out. Uh, the menus are showing up there. So this is relevant because it's telling us what people are actually seeing when they're visiting your site and when it's happening. So the numbers are great on this previous page here. And in that load time that they, for the first view, they said 2.4. Well, it's actually, looks like it's complete by about 2.1. So this number can, is interesting, but can be misleading. So I, I advise always take a look at that film strip view to see how it's actually showing up to people. All right, um, how many people have heard of GT metrics or have used it? All right, and I think they're local as well. Um, so I don't recommend GT metrics. <laughs> I'm going I'm to tell you why, actually, pretty quickly. Um, the biggest reason is, I don't, it's, to me, there's a lot of information in there, but it can be misleading. I find people going down the rabbit hole all the time or focusing on something that's not actually important. So here's a GT metrics test I ran on, well, this was for LA, but, um, and we can see here, there's a bunch of stuff on here. Page speed score, I don't, why do I care about that? Same thing with, you know, why slow? Okay, so if you're in Vancouver, this is actually a good thing to testing from Vancouver. Well, but what if all your visitors aren't here? Um, Again, like I showed earlier with the film strip view, is fully loaded time actually correct? And so, 
And then, you know, I really actually care about these things. More stuff I don't care about, so. Um, and so, plus a lot of the stuff I do care about, I either have to sign up for an account or it's buried or I have to click through things. And so I kind of threw together this checklist and everything I want to see typically when I'm analyzing performance shows up right in front of me in web page tests and less so in GT metrics and pingdom. Uh, so just going back to is we, you want to focus on is it measuring what your user, users are actually experiencing? So how many, how many of your visitors do you think come to your website and think, hmm, I wonder what grade this got on GT metrics when they got to it? No. People want to know how fast is that page rendering, how fast is it showing up, and that's what that film strip view shows you. So remember, just think about what are your users actually experiencing. So what matters most? We care about if it's Google searching, they often won't do a full page load, so we care about that time to first byte. And if it's a person or a visitor, you care about the visual completion time, which is you can see by the film strip in the video, and sometimes the loading spinner. So if you're, some people will notice that a page may look complete but still see that spinner. That, that's also something to, um, I guess, consider or be, or be aware of. What do we not care about? Random scores and grades, and a bunch of line items on a list. Now. These line items that you might see, on, and they show up on all these test tools, are, they might influence what we care about, but you need to kind of, well, that's wrapping funny, but you need to understand how they actually affect what you really do care about. So don't get stuck focusing on, you know, oh, my page speed score is only an E. You know, think about what, you know, what matters. All right, so time to first bite. So where does that come from? So the biggest factors for your, um, that time to first bite are your hosting provider, and we'll talk more about that, and your website implementation. And what does that mean? Well, with WordPress, that means your theme and your plugins, typically. And so let's do, uh, here's the interactive part. So if you've got a laptop here, let me see how many people, and if you can pull up a website, I should have told you about this at the end, then we can try pulling this page up together Oops, let's go to the next one. And we've got a, so the page is bit.ly dot slash live speed. And I think it's, it was supposed to be on here. Ah, but I took it off. But if you can go to that page, then this works better when I actually put it on the page itself. You can, oh, you know what? And I took the, the uh, input off. So never mind, this isn't gonna work for today. So skip that part, sorry. I had a cool tool here where you get to come through and everyone gets to put in their website and test their time to first byte. So instead, since I forgot something, go ahead and just use web page test. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Okay, so talking more about WordPress hosting. So your hosting provider, and yes, it does matter. And it matters a lot. And is better hosting the silver bullet for your WordPress performance? And much of the time it is. Other times, well, if a site's slow, even if you put it on faster hosting, it may still be slow. So first, how do you find out if your hosting is a problem? Well, I used to say it's easier to tell if your hosting is not a problem. Um, I say less so, actually, I can kind of tell just by when someone tells me where they're hosted, if it is. Um, but also certain hosting providers are known to be well optimized and fast. In others, it could depend on the time of day, the plan, the box, server configuration, stuff like that. So, um, how do different hosting providers differ? Well, one indicator is if they're running Apache or not. Um, if they're running Apache, oftentimes in most cPanel-based hosts, if you have cPanel on your, your web hosting, it's probably running Apache. I found that Nginx tends to be quite a bit faster, and you'll find that on hosts that uh, manage WordPress platforms that are more custom. They often have a custom interface. They're not using cPanel. But the number of those hosts is much smaller compared to the cPanel host. There's an exception to this, though, if your uh, host is running cPanel but then has chosen to use Lightspeed for um, their actual web server. Uh, I've seen that perform quite well. So Apache fast, slow, Nginx pretty fast. 
But then besides just looking at your server specs, then how else can you tell if your host is causing part of your speed problem? Well, it's not an easy thing to do or verify reliably, at least not while it's, your site is on your current host. So try another hosting provider. And how? Put an exact copy of your site on another known to be or optimized website host, or WordPress host. And there's a few ways you can do this. Um, I've kind of rated them by how easy they are. You can use a backup and restore plugin. So I'm Updraft Plus. Um, there are a bunch of other different ones. Uh, and you can create a backup and then install the plugin on your on the new host and uh, restore it. There are some uh, hosts that provide their own kind of migration or a plugin, or there's uh, a lot that use a migration plugin from, uh, I think it's Blog Vault. And they integrate a little bit more easily with the hosting platform, and you can just put in an API key or a token into that and then um, import your site. And then if you, they're <clears throat> even better than that is if you can sign up for on the new hosting and you can just put in your WordPress admin credentials and it'll pull the entire site over or something like that. So we actually do that on Site District. Uh, let's see. So, oh, and oh, the one part I didn't have in the text, but I wanted to mention. So there are a lot of hosting providers will let you have a 30-day money get back guarantee or a few, some hosting providers will let you sign up and put up a, a site for free with that until you launch it live or put point your domain at it, you won't have to pay. So. You might want to check out and see, hey, check out some of these other hosting providers, even sign up, move a site over, and then actually just test it with uh, some of these tools to see if it gets faster. So is more expensive hosting worth it? And so, so a lot of the a lot of the more optimized, faster hosts, they, they cost they seem to cost more, um, at least on paper. So is it worth it? Um, well, if it's an e-commerce site with any volume and you're making money off that site, then I would argue yes. Is speed important to the client and is budget a concern? Those are good questions. Uh, and you have to consider that good managed WordPress hosting often um, contains a lot of what other, other hosting providers will upsell later, such as backups, SSL certificate, staging, functionality, security, firewall. Um, some of those things will come wrapped up with, you know, a, more, a better managed WordPress host. And finally, what is your time worth? Do you want to send this, sit there, stay on? Is, if your site's slow, it's slowing you down, and you know, and and uh, your time to speed it up with other means might just not be worth it. All right. Um, so, and how do you sell your sign a client on better hosting if you think that's part of the solution? Well. You, just tell your client up front that this is how much it's going to cost. Don't necessarily give them um, options or give them cheaper options, which you know to be inferior. If you've got existing sites, then move, bring a copy of the site over to a different host and optimize it first, and then just tell the client, hey, like I fixed your site speed. Um, it's on this new host. You'll have to finish. Um, you'll have to finish migration. Instead of telling them like, hey, I think it'll be faster. Actually, just prove it to them and show them. And time is money. How much is your time worth? How much do you charge a client? Let's say 40 bucks an hour. Let's say, um, this was in US dollars, but you can round. Um, and if that's how much you charge, then half an hour spent dealing with speed issues a month is already $20 extra there you just wasted. And then let's say you're loading a bunch of pages and you're waiting that much longer. If you load 60 page loads a day for a month, that's 20 bucks right there. And if you have to spend six hours, you know, every once a year cleaning up a site, then that's another 20 bucks a month right there. So, so is that $5 a month hosting plan really cheaper? And are you happy, you know, saving that much money? So that's st just stuff to ask yourself. Um, some recommended optimized WordPress hosts. So I've got, um, I've seen good performance definitely from Kinsta and Pantheon. Um, I used to list WP Engine, but They've, at least unless you're on one of their higher plans and all that, over the last year and a half, I've, you know, their performance hasn't been at least as good as, at least as good as the top two on here. Um, I've heard good things about these other two here, and then we're on the bottom, so uh, we, uh, we try to provide pretty fast hosting too. 
And all right, so now what about that? So let's say you've moved your, your website over to a fast host, but it's still slow. So then you're stuck. How do you figure out what's, why is your site still slow? And that, <clears throat> and that is WordPress running. That's WordPress executing PHP and MySQL. And to most people, that's a black box. And so today, at least, how am I doing on time? I'm going to try and take a look inside that black box. And to do that, I'm going to talk to you a bit about new, a tool called New Relic. And that's an application performance monitoring tool. And there's a free version of it available. Uh, the pro version is the most useful, and there's a free trial for that. You do need root level access uh, to install it. But the good news is that several WordPress hosting providers actually provide access to it already. And I personally have diagnosed hundreds of performance issues very quickly using the, uh, this tool, and I'll show you some screenshots of it in just a second. But first, when you're diagnosing and trying to solve a performance problem, you're going to go through a series of steps. First, you're going to generate some kind of traffic to the website. Um, well, you're going to turn the profiler on first. But then you're going to generate and wait for, or wait for traffic you're using in production, and you're just going like, to let regular traffic hit it. Uh, then you're going to review the profiling results, and this is where we're going to look at New Relic. You're going to make a change and repeat. And so the difference between this process and not using New Relic is, is step two, and this is where we're taking the guesswork out of it. Is instead of guessing, hey, I think this pro program might be causing the issue, we're actually going to be able to tell with a high degree of confidence that uh, what is actually slowing down our site. So once we've generated some traffic to New Relic, uh, to our site, then we can jump into New Relic. And we'll land, first of all, we'll, we'll usually end up on the overview page here. And it's useful information. It'll tell us that, that uh, uh, time to first byte or server response time is up here. And it'll tell you how long it's spent in PHP, which is most of the time, and then how much of the time in the, with the database in MySQL. And that's interesting, but it's not as helpful. Uh, but let's see, I think it's been a couple, couple of years now, New Relic came out with a WordPress feature where it act, will actually break down the time spent inside the different plugins and themes. So if we click down here on this plugins and themes section here, then we'll get something that look, looks like this. And this will break down how much time was spent uh, on your theme and the different plugins that you have activated. So on this particular site here that we were looking at, uh, they had an A-B testing plugin installed, and it was taking up a good chunk of the time. And it turned out they didn't even need that plugin. And so for the, this was an easy fix. They just, just disabled this plugin, and the site was instantly much faster. If this or if this view doesn't show you enough about what's going on, then you can also dig down into what are called transaction traces. And so this shows wh what time for that request, what time was actually spent for a single request, where it, uh, wh what it was doing. And so for this request here, the, the page was actually going to be done in a good amount of time. It was going to be finished in 230 milliseconds, and that's a quarter of a second. But then this shutdown hook triggered, and it spent another two seconds doing this sync with a jetpack of some sort. So jetpack was sending data back to its server. And so what would have been a really fast request, instead, someone was waiting two and a half seconds for that page to come back while Jetpack did something. So let's see. And so just some examples here. And I'll talk a little bit more about, like, is just because I see something in here, is it a bad plugin? And, that's, and the answer is no. Um, but it's a place to start. So. We found on some sites here that at least with Jetpack has a lot of stuff in it. So certain things with certain things enabled on this site that um, the site was really slow. And once we once we disabled it, this is what we saw. Um, Beaver Builder, it's a great plugin too, but um, we and I think it, <clears throat> it. But it's it's like most of the page builders, it's a bit heavy. So. Um, what we found is that if you're running Beaver Builder, you just need to have some pretty good fast hosting. Uh, and then what about your WordPress admin? We actually profiled the WordPress admin to see how long that was taking. 
Um, you can go through and just click on all the pages while you have New Relic turned on if you want, and then found that, hey, uh, well, look, why, Yoast SEO is slowing down my, my admin. So before, uh, before I learned to use New Relic and when I first started and set up Site District and, and the hosting, this is how I felt about performance. Like I didn't know where to start. And so once I learned about New Relic and how to use these tools, it was a bit more like this. <laughs> All right, so considerations on this. Um, New Relic does have an, a performance impact, so you don't usually want to leave it on. Uh, leave it on until you've diagnosed things and issues have been resolved. Um, but you can't go back in time, so if you have some problem that happens occasionally, you might need to leave it on for a while and wait for that to happen if you can't reproduce it yourself. Um, it's not the n number of plugins, uh, it's but what they're doing. And so in a plugin, showing up on top of the list doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad plugin, so check out the configuration. It's a starting point. Settings, other stuff like that. Check if there's an update to the plugin. It might be just something that was an issue but has already been fixed, or talk to the developers. It might be an easy fix. And your theme can easily be a major part of your performance problem, too. Um, that can be harder or more expensive to fix, so profile your site early. Um, if you pull up the slides later, there's some good guides on using New Relic um, from several other hosting providers that uh, walk through some of the same stuff I looked at. And let's see, am I doing on time? Almost got to wrap it up. I'm doing pretty good. All right, page load speed. So the, uh, in many cases, from what I found in my experience is you get the most bang from your buck from just having good, fast hosting. Uh, after that, you know, if, you, if it's still slow, take a look at your plugins, do some profiling, find out what's going on there for your time to first byte. If your time to first byte's no longer your, your bottleneck, then you gotta look at the rest of your page load speed. And so, start with web page test. In many cases, uh, your images might, if you're getting an F in the image optimization on that page, then go ahead and optimize your images. That can have a big uh, impact on your actual page load speed. It won't affect your time to first byte, but for people actually loading the page, that is a, often the next step to take. And so, yeah, like I said, check the score for compressed images. Um, at the bottom, I didn't show it, but on the bottom of a web page test, it shows a pie chart showing how much of the data for that page is, is, a part, is coming from images. And check for large PNG images that don't have transparency that could be made into JPEGs. Um, those, you can save a lot of time and space um, by converting those. And there are some cases where, you, where you'll even get an A on web page tests, and you can compress even more than that, too. Uh, so, and then if you might just need to analyze that waterfall a little bit better. So, um, take a look, figure out how to understand the waterfall on web page test and, and what's really going on with your site if it's still slow. And finally, um, well, maybe not finally. Did I have that on here? Oh, it's on the next slide. Um, more advanced stuff, you could defer your image loading or um, you're loading certain JavaScripts or CSS files, and that would be based on what you see in the waterfall. So summary, measure performance first. Pick a good hosting provider, switch to one. If your time to, vite, time to first byte is still slow, then do some profiling, uh, optimize your images, analyze your site's page load, and if you're still stuck, uh, you know, ask for help. There's lots of people out there with um, experience optimizing WordPress and page loads and stuff like that, so. And if I have time, I could do a demo. How are we at? I think, I think we need to, I've got like two minutes maybe, or up to five, so. Okay, well I'll just go ahead and wrap it up then for today. Um, and actually, let's just do questions for the last two minutes. Yes, right here. Uh, we're in U.S. dollars. We're based in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we actually let you sign up completely free under our platform. You can import your uh, WordPress site onto our platform. We have a bunch of things that I, tools and screenshots and then demo that I didn't mention that make it really easy to run uh, both web page test and crawls through your site to see how the performance is. So we, we, are, we don't charge until you actually want to launch your site and put it live. So you can 
put both new sites and your existing ones on there. Yes? Yes, yeah, so the question was for generating the traffic so you can look at profiling data on it, do I have a recommendation on what to use for that? So actually the recommendation on that is if you add your site to our platform on Site District, whether it's hosted there or not, then you can, we have a speed crawling tool that you can use to crawl your site and you can tell it, do you want to request and hit 30 pages up to 100 and stuff like that, and that's a good way to generate traffic on it. Um, I'm sure there's some others. Um, so. Yes. If so, the question is: If you don't have New Relic um, and you don't have access to install it on your server, what's what's a backup plan for that? And I think it's what I said in one of the slides earlier: is make a copy of your site somewhere else where you do have access for that, and get it up and running there. And then even if you don't choose to keep your site there, um, usually proportionally that amount of time that even if your site's a different speed on that different host where you've set that up, it'll usually be proportionally due to the same plugins and themes and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, on the score or the, the tools, the report from it, So what, so the question was, what do I think on Google page speed and the score of that? I think there's a lot of good information in that, and, but like many of the tools, I think you want to use it as a guideline about what, where you might look, but always keeping in mind what your actual goal is. So people don't necessarily care about the score, but the score might help you figure out how to optimize how fast people are seeing the stuff on your page. So use it, use it to optimize the things that matter. Uh, mirror sites, yes, no, not a good idea. Mirror sites, sir. Um, I don't know that I'd recommend duplicating content necessarily that way. I, I if you need a, a CDN in front of your site, I definitely would recommend that. And that's great if you have your, your site visitors are geographically distributed. Usually save that until the end. A uh, good C CDN will help a lot with people that are closer to those edge points where the CDN might be located, but it won't fix your, your server um, response time and that. So I usually save that until the end. I had a, another question, yes. Okay, the question is, let's say you figure out a plugin is slow with New Relic, um, and then you know, how, if you're working with the developers or you have someone looking at it, like how, how to figure out why is it slow? And usually that looking at the actual transaction traces, so I just showed one example of a transaction trace, but inside New Relic you would go under transactions and dig into there and see where it's spending that time um, for, and it's, it can take a while to, sometimes some things are obvious, but um, yeah, it takes a little while to dig into that. Um, but that's where to start is through the transaction traces. All right, um, let's do one more question here in the black. So the time to first byte um, is dependent somewhat on the network speed because wherever the computer is waiting for it, that, that can affect it. So if you're testing the time to first byte in for, from Vancouver to Europe, it's gonna be higher. Ideally, you've got a tool that will factor out such things as the connections, the DNS lookup, and focus just on the time um, that it took the server to respond back. But it does affect, it is affected a bit by um, location, so. 
All right, thanks a lot for everyone coming. Um, and if you have any more questions, I'll be hanging out around outside, so thanks again.